My friends, as you probably recall, the gospel readings for the past few Sundays have been all about parables. Jesus telling parables to the people. They're very earthy things about seeds, about weeds, about harvesting, about hidden treasures. And Jesus is giving very practical lessons. He teaches sublime truths in a very earthy way. Uh, I've been helped by two books recently that I've been reading. Of course, one book that's most important, and that's the scripture, the Bible. I hope that you all have a Bible at home and that you pick it up regularly and read, particularly the Gospels. You know, we're, we Catholics are Bible people, or we're not Christians, we're Bible people. So particularly the scriptures, particularly the Gospels are as important. But I've been reading two books that kind of help understand better the Gospels. I'd recommend them to you. One is uh, by a, a well-known Jesuit author, James Martin, called Jesus, a Pilgrimage. And the other is by a Spanish scripture scholar, Jose Pagolo, and he calls it Jesus, an historical approximation. Now, both of these writers give us the grounding of Jesus, where he lived, how he lived, when he lived, what the situation was. It gives us a picture of the history, which is so very important to understand Jesus. Yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and he does wonderful, marvelous things. But he's also very human, just like you and me. And he grows up in very human situations. And it's very helpful to understand those human situations, those situations of history. You know, what was Galilee like in his days? What was the little town of Nazareth like? Uh, what was Lake Genezareth like? He gives us, these authors gives us really grounding pictures makes Jesus more real. We truly do believe that he is God, but he's also human like you and me. I think that's why Jesus preaches in parables, because he can talk to the people in languages that they understand, images that they understand. And even today, we can also. Uh, there are two very practical parables in the scripture we just heard today. Easy to get the message, maybe more challenging to apply the lesson to ourselves now. It's the stories of the man who stumbles across a buried treasure and the man who finds a pearl of great worth. And each of these people sell all they possess, give up everything that they have in order to secure the treasures of that hidden treasure and of that pearl. Jesus tells these parables to help the people around him and to help us today, all through history, what it means to really go for the kingdom of God, for what is most important. Certainly many, many important things on earth and utilizing these important things, working with them, we work for the kingdom of God. But it is the kingdom of God, the reign of God, which is important and not just a passing fancy. And we need to keep our eyes and our hearts open to that. Let me suggest four qualities, four qualities that I think these parables teach me and even you today to take seriously as we go after what is really important. And just imagine as I'm listing these four, what's important in your life now and how do you go after what is important? Well, first of all, we have to be on the lookout for the good th things in life, for what is genuinely good. We have to be alert to treasures that might be hidden, that we might see every day something or someone who is a treasure, and we might ignore them. But they shouldn't be hidden. We're not always obvious, maybe, these hidden treasures or pearls of a greater quality instead of just junk. But we need to be on the outlook. 
what are the really important things that relate to the kingdom of God? And be alert to that. And secondly, of course, that we need to be able to evaluate realistically and honestly. Uh, we need to know what is good, what is bad. Uh, not be fooled or to be attracted by things that are worthless. We need to be wise like Solomon in that first reading, that very beautiful first reading that tells about Solomon, son of David. And when God asks, what do you want? He says, I want the wisdom to lead my people well. Well, we need wisdom to be able to evaluate things realistically and honestly. You know, they say, uh, read advertisements, but read the fine print. Uh, maybe you have the experience that I do, sometimes watching the evening news and uh, the advertisements that come on. There'll be an advertisement for a new medicine, and the first 15 seconds of that advertisement tell you how wonderful it's going to be. It's going to change your life. It's going to do all these wonderful things. And the next 45 seconds tell you, but of course it may kill you in the process or so. <laughs> well, we need to be alert to evaluate things realistically and honestly. I think a third quality that shows up in these parables is we need to be willing to act quickly to obtain what's important to achieve what really matters. Not to say, well, tomorrow or next week or next year, I'll look at those things. No, we must sacrifice. Don't hesitate and then find that we lost the opportunity. Know what we're called to and what is really important. St. Paul emphasized that in the second reading. There are just so many things, but some things are most important. And we must be willing to act to obtain what's most important. And fourthly, I just mentioned that we must be willing to enjoy then the good things that God gives to us. That's what God wants. But of course, we must be sharing of these good things with others. And we must be always thankful for the good things. God's goodness, God's compassion what we sang about or what we heard about so strongly in the psalm reading. Well, life is full of choices, many choices we have to make, some small, some large, some are easy, some are more difficult, some are passing, and some are permanent. But I think with the parables of today, these parables about the treasure that's hidden and the pearl of great price, teach you and me how to be serious in our choices. For those four things, to be on the lookout for the good things in life, to be able to evaluate things realistically, honestly, to be willing to act quickly to obtain what's important, and then to be ready to enjoy the good things that God does have for us. The parables of today really teach us teach us in very practical ways for you and me to be serious about our choices and to trust God's guidance. Uh, having to make choices can sometimes cause stress, you know, little tensions maybe. And stressing can be depressing sometimes. It reminds me of something I read, I'm not sure I shared it here before, but it sort of summed up something about this that there are these two common words, they're interrelated, stress and depress. Much of my life, my stressing may lead to depressing. I stress about stress before there's even stress to stress about. <laughs> then I stress about stressing over stress that doesn't need to be stressed about. It's really very distress, it's very stressing and indeed depressing. Well, hopefully what's been shared in the scripture and what will be strengthened in the Eucharist won't stress or depress us. 
Let me suggest a couple of prayerful moments. Let's just take a couple of moments of prayer now and reflect on two questions today and during the week. Number one, is there some treasure right now in my life that I really should go after with more seriousness and more trust? Is there something very important in my life that I really should go after more seriously and with more trust? And secondly, this coming week, is there someone close to me, my family, my friends, that I can help to know and enjoy what is really important? So a couple of moments of just quiet prayer. Is there some treasure that I should really go after more seriously? And in this week coming up, can I maybe help someone to go after what is really important? Let's take a couple of moments of prayer.